something else that we can do that could be quite useful. Um, get service. Okay, now this shows us all the services that are running on our computer, um, which is uh, very, very useful. So that we're starting to step into things that actually we might want to do with systems administrators. Now you can see here that we've got a whole list of uh, services. Some uh, they're running, some have stopped. I'm, I'm, let me just scroll up to the top so you can actually see um, what's right at the top. You can see that there's the status where they've stopped or running, there's the name, and then there's a display name. Um, uh, yeah, that's the three columns for them. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of information there. Um, what we can do, though, is we can then uh, take that uh, result of get service and then do something with it. Maybe we can filter it. So to filter it, we really need to take the results from get service and put it into something else. And this is where pipelining comes in. Um, now, people who've used command prompt may not be familiar with pipelining. Um, and it's a way of sending the results of one command as the input to another command. And we do this by separating two commands using the pipe character. Now, on your keyboard, the pipe character is usually the one that's um, either next to or below your backspace um, uh, when you press the shift key. Um, so here's an example, get service, uh, and then I can use the pipeline, and I can have where object commandlet. Now where object commandlet is pretty obvious, it's where the object does something. Now this uh, is in the curly brackets. Um, now where the object, um, something to do with the object. Now we've had to look at those three, uh, three rows of information. One's called status, one's called name, one's called display name. So what I want to do is have a look where the object, let's say the status of the object. So we have the dollar sign, the underscore dot. So it takes any of them and looks at their status. And I'm going to make it equal, OK? Um, so it's not the equal sign. We actually use this uh, dash equal is equal to running, okay, because we've got running and stop there. Uh, and there you see what it does is it takes the get service, it takes all of those services, it then puts it into the where object and the status is running, and it will just show me the ones that are running. So it's basically it's filtering. Um, so the where object is very, very useful. Uh, let me clear this. Another thing we could do is um, we could uh, get the service. Um, and then we could pipe that into, um, ooh, let me spell it right, uh, where object. And uh, this time we'll make it, uh, we'll have a look at the name. So we're going to look at the name. So dollar sign underscore dot and then the name. Um, and we'll make the name equal to one thing. So what I'm trying to do is fish out one, um, one of those uh, services. Now uh, let me think of a service that we probably have running. LM hosts will be running. Um, there we have, uh, and it will just uh, take out, um, a look at all those services in the get service, and then it will put it into the where object, and then it will actually uh, run our filter and just uh, output that information. <coughs> now the good thing about this um, is that you can pipeline from one to another to another. So let's um, do uh, something else, uh, get service pipeline that into where object and let's um, think about something um, okay we'll go back to the status um, oops wrong one status uh, is equal to uh, stopped we haven't looked at that yet um, and then we could pipeline that into uh, a sort object okay so sort object we haven't looked at yet um, and we can sort object by maybe display name. Okay, and there we have. Um, I, I'll just uh, scroll up a bit so you can see that um, it's just taken all the services that are, are going on. It's then filtered them by the status to see if it's stopped. And then it's actually sorted them by display name, okay, rather than the actual name. Um, so you can see this is kind of a powerful thing to do. Um, and pipelining is very, very useful, uh, not just for sorting, but for doing other things as well. One thing we might want to do is actually save the output to a text file. So, for example, I might want to look at ipconfig, which shows us the uh, Ethernet adapter configuration. 
Um, now that's fine to look at on screen, but you know it'd be really nice to save that as a file. So um, I can put ipconfig, and I can pipeline that into a new commandlet, outfile. And I outfile um, is a file I'm going to save it to, and I'm going to save it to a simple text file. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to take the result of ipconfig, rather than showing it on the screen, it's going to send it to the, uh, into a file called ip.txt. And that's it. It's simple enough. Um, let's see if it's actually there. Get child item. And there it is at the bottom of the screen. Um, ip.txt. Uh, oops. Something that would be very useful would be to take the uh, the current date and add that as well to the file. So, for example, I could uh, get date. We've looked at that already, and I could pipeline that to the wrong one out file, um, and I'll put it in the same file ip dot text. Um, now. What I want to do is I want to add it to the end of the file. So if I use the append switch, it will actually add it to the end of the file. So I've got get date, pipe, out file, ip.txt, append. Um, and it goes straight away. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, open that in notepad so you can see. There we go. Um, and you can see that it's uh, got the IP address. And it's actually here. It's added the, um, the date to the end of it, uh, which is very, very useful. Something that people who've used the command prompt might want to do is to save a batch file. Now, with the PowerShell, we can actually save PowerShell scripts um, as uh, a text file using a normal text editor with a .ps1 extension. So, um, what I'm going to do is um, go through that. Uh, what I'll do is I'll first of all make that um, uh, file, new item, name. Uh, I'm going to call it date.ps1. That's going to be my PowerShell script file. And uh, the type is actually going to be a file. Now, we've seen this before, um, and it's made it there. Now, I'm going to use the old uh, DOS edit. Um, people might be used to this. Uh, so I'm just going to edit PS1. And there's the DOS edit program. And in this, I'm just going to save my, my script, my PowerShell script. Now, it's going to be a very simple one. It's going to be something we've looked at before get date, display, hint, and time. Okay, and then I'm just going to save it. File, uh, save, file, fix it. Okay, um, and that's my, um, my script saved. Now, just to run it, all I need to do is to uh, dot slash and then the actual name, which is date dot ps1. Now, you can see that there seems to be an error here. It says uh, PS1 cannot be loaded because the execution of scripts is disabled on this system. Please see get help about signing. Now, when you first install PowerShell, um, automatically, for security reasons, it won't allow scripts to run. Okay. Now, we can check this by... Um, let me just clear this. Clear. We can check this by uh, having a look at the execution policy. So, if we go get execution policy um, it shows us that the execution policy is restricted uh, now there's a, a different number of uh, policies that we can have um, the restricted policy means it won't run any scripts at all uh, with the .ps1 extension now um, I want to change that I actually want to set uh, the execution policy you can see how this uh, pairing works um, and I want to set it to uh, remote uh, signed. Now, remote signed, um, basically what remote signed does, it allows you to run scripts that you've made on this computer, but if someone emails you a script, then it won't run, um, which is kind of uh, a little bit more secure um, than being com completely unrestricted. Um, let's have a look make sure it's actually done. Execution policy. Um, I've obviously spelt it wrong. Yeah, uh, there we go. Um, and you can see now that it's it's remote signed. So if we now run our um, script, so uh, dot slash, it was called date dot ps one. Our script runs.